and welcome back to AMC Jedi Council. I am Christian Harloff, a.k.a. Darth Harloff, and this is another episode of where we break down everything going on in the Star Wars universe, the canon, the movies, everything. And joining me on the council today, it's a special council. First, we got him back. It is Obi-John Kenobi, the editor-in-chief. Hey guys. How are you, John? Very excited to be back to see some very, very cool things to talk about yeah. this week. I'm excited. I'm also excited because we have another Sith Lord at the table. I yes. thought we were gonna I thought we were gonna get Boba Schnepp, but we got <laughs> Darth <laughs> Schnepp That's instead. Right. There he is, Darth Schnepp, John Schnepp. What's up, bud? <laughs> Pleasure to be on Jedi Council. Finally. Now what Young what Jedis. now what the, the people at home don't realize is that he actually shows up in the AMC offices every day wearing that. Oh, I've never seen him without it. Yeah, no, it's like all the time. That's yeah. it. That's goes to the part, bathroom. It's comes part back. of his skull at this point. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of. Bitter. Okay, so here is how the show works. If you didn't know beforehand, we go through everything that connects to the Star Wars movies. And the first thing on the show today, it's all about Star Wars news stories. That's everything going on in the world of the movies, the news, what's happening. And it's kind of <laughs> interesting this week because a lot of them come from stuff that I heard personally. Um, and this first rumor is a rumor that we reported on on Schmoes No, and this is Obi-Wan Kenobi is possibly starring in a trilogy. Now, this was a rumor that had come out. It's been floated around a bit, but what we had heard more and more recently is that they're really pressing with this thing and that they're going after Ewan McGregor for a trilogy of movies. Now, in this trilogy, I don't know if that necessarily means it's going to be kind of three standalone films or a connected trilogy, but it seems to be heating up again, and it also seems that there might be rumors and grumblings that Darth Maul will finally appear, and I know you and I talked about if he was going to appear at all, it would be in something like this. Yeah. So let's say, and, cause I, and, and we even said it too, This is it, it's still nothing set in stone, it's, talking, it, it's being talked about, but let's say it does happen. Is this something you'd be excited about? No. At all? Uh, oh, no, I'm not, not at all. Um, you know, we've talked about it before. Like everybody knows that I'm not, I'm not big on going backwards in storylines again. But I've said before about Obi Wan, mm -hmm. there's a story to be told there about Obi Wan on Tatooine and, and the adventures he has there and stuff like that. I there's a part of me, even though I'm not big on going backwards in stories, I, I don't want to keep going because everything we hear being talked about is young Han movie, young Boba Fett, young Obi Wan, young Yoda. Just move the freaking story forward, right? But I said in the midst of all that, something that could be pretty intriguing is what goes on with Obi-Wan Tatooine. And we have said before that if you're going to bring Darth Maul back, you have to bring him back in conjunction with Obi-Wan at some point because that just makes the most sense. Yeah. And that offers you the most opportunities. Because who's Darth Maul going to fight in any other type of film? If, if you're going to bring him back... Who's he going to fight? Well, and their, their their arc hasn't ended yet in Clone Wars because Clone right. Wars, it, they had this big battle and, and Darth Maul's still running around out there somewhere. Who better to take him out than Obi-Wan? Yeah, the, and you know now he's got his robotic legs and yeah. all that kind of stuff. So that's really interesting. So there's, am I excited about it? No, but are there interesting possibilities there? Yes, I just don't dig the idea of a trilogy of it though. A hermit in the desert, how far can you go with that? Well, let me, Schnapp, what do you think? I actually am excited about it because I, I'm sure they'll get him off Tatooine. That'll be the very first thing they do. Probably, yeah. Uh, he's been, you know, he's on Tatooine. He dropped off the twins. He's hanging out in some cave, you know, and they're like, Obi-Wan, we need your help. And they like instantly off that planet. Like he's on Tatooine for like 10 minutes, gets involved in some adventure. I don't know if doing a trilogy is off the bat is a great idea. I would love to see an Obi-Wan standalone movie and definitely see him you know, finally kill Darth Maul. I mean, because, you know, if you don't watch all the rest of everything and didn't know that Darth Maul was still alive and had spider legs and it has robot legs, you might just still assume that he's dead. So you have to, for the people who didn't watch all these extracurricular canon-involved type things, you have to, in the Obi-Wan, you know, in the Obi-Wan movie, you have to say, like, look, Darth Maul's still alive, show a little bit of the backstory or whatnot, you know. But I would love to see that. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I'd like to see it also. I, this is one of the spinoffs. I actually wish that it would have happened. I still am cool with Rogue One. I think Rogue One's going to be phenomenal as far as storytelling goes. But it's, um, we'll talk about the next spinoff in a second. But I wish the Obi-Wan would have actually been this, the second spinoff that they did. Just because I'm curious. I'd like to see what Obi-Wan was doing on Tatooine, how he protected Luke, but also other things that there are missions that even may tie into Rebels. And maybe that even ties, there's a lot of grumblings that Lucasfilm really wants to get Kanan involved in the, the live action as well too. So I don't know if there's a hookup. I don't know what's gonna be happening in Rebels that the whole series will be over by the time this movie comes yeah. out. 
But as far as three standalone movies go, I don't. I think that I like the idea. I don't want it to be a connecting trilogy. I like three standalone Obi Wan mission movies. I think that could be cool because of Ewan McGregor. I think he was the best thing about the prequels. He he really yeah. embodied Obi Wan Kenobi, and he gets a chance if because what Disney's been doing and Lucasfilm has been doing so far is putting good directors on these pieces and putting good talent in these pieces. We'll finally get to see Ewan McGregor utilize what he's so good at, his talents, right. and on, in a real trilogy about Obi Wan. Actually, so, act. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think, I, although I think most people would agree that Watto was was the best part. That's true. About, <laughs> about Jar Jar, I, I will go so far as to say this, though. I, I'll go so far as to say, if we if we do indeed get a a standalone Obi Wan film, you know, in the desert Tatooine, I will be disappointed if we don't see Darth Maul show up. Oh, you have. I mean, to. I think you get. Yeah, I think that's just a must. Yeah. I think Especially it's a must. With, with Lucasfilm and the story group, they, they're they're the ones who decided to bring him back right. yeah. so it would be a very big missed opportunity if they don't bring him back because yeah. he's one, another guy we're just talking about what Ewan McGregor what, to see him finally do what he could do what the main thing everyone talks about in the prequels is you killed Darth Maul too quick yeah. he was gone too quick he in had the like two lines of dialogue that was it yeah. and he was the coolest character so yeah. we get to see him again that'd be great okay moving on uh, this also this is the second part of the report that we had posted and this was about the Boba Fett movie now, what they're talking about in Boba Fett, from what we're hearing, is that it's not just going to be about Boba Fett, is that we're going to actually finally see young Han Solo, and not only young Han Solo, that Lando Calrissian might pop up in there, we're going to get oh, yeah. Chewie, there's a lot of stuff, and it, this, this is almost what they're saying here, from what we're hearing, is that it's, it's, a, it's a mixture, there was a lot of reports that it was going to be Boba Fett, and then young Han Solo, and it looks like they're combining the two, and there's that other game that was, that was that's supposed to be coming out that they might announce at E3, that might be a, a Han Solo game so it would kind of make sense if they right. eventually announce this this sounds like your worst nightmare am i right yeah <laughs> worst nightmare no we'll get to something that, that sounds like my worst nightmare a little bit later okay. in the show okay. but I, I again you know what i don't want to keep going telling old stories i don't want to keep going back and telling prehistory stories now and all that being said um there is something very cool about seeing Boba Fett again and seeing uh, Han Solo again and, and all that kind of stuff, granted. But I read a great article, and I can't remember if it was by Drew McWeeny from Hit Fix or if it was by somebody else, talking about, look, one of the things that ruined the prequels for a lot of people, and there's some people that like the prequels, but for a lot of people who didn't like the prequels, one of the things that ruined it was the demystification of Darth Vader. Mm. You know, like, you had Darth Vader, and there's, like, notwithstanding the end of Return of the Jedi, he was still, for the most part, this very mysterious figure. And it's one of the reasons we talked about how Darth Maul only had a couple of lines. But I would almost argue that that goes towards a little bit why we're so fascinated with him. Right. There's that cloud of mystery still over him. Boba Fett, to me, feels like the last remaining Star Wars character that has that going, and it feels like by doing an entire movie dedicated to him, we're going to throw that out, too. And I'm, I'm a little bit worried. That doesn't mean it can't be brilliant. And it doesn't mean in the hands of the right director and the right writers that they can make something spectacular. But yeah, I hear stuff like this, and the fact that, well, once again, going backwards, because we can't think of anything, any new stories to tell in this vast Star Wars galaxy, you know, the risking, demystifying Boba Fett, who's one of the coolest characters in the canon... It, it worries me, but it's a worry. It, there's still the possibility it could be awesome. See, I think that by announcing Han Solo, or not announcing, but if Han Solo is in the movie and these guys are, I think that it actually, we get a better chance of keeping the mystery of him. Because I think that if it was just a standalone Boba Fett movie, then with it, there's the risk of learning more about when he put on the costume and, and learning about his training. If it goes back into, just picks up of him right as a bounty hunter, we almost get what we're getting in the comics. Is it, that's just Boba Fett. That's what he's been doing. Right. He's been, and now we, if, we're, if we're connecting why he and Han Solo have this initial beef with Jabba and everything, you don't need to go too much into it. I just want to see him kicking ass. That's what I want to see Boba Fett doing. I want to, and I agree with you 100%. I want to see that character that I loved so much in the small glimpses that we got him. I don't want to go into backstory, and I think that this might be a reason that we won't get that. But well, you know? look at the prequels. is already half ruining Boba Fett with all the stupid clone, you know, army and the little kid <laughs> Boba Fett, and you know, you already he's holding his dad's head. Yeah, Django dad, Fett. get him. So yeah. the sooner I can forget about all that, and what I think they're trying to do with these new anthology films is successfully retconning the canon by, hey, look, we're not saying the prequels didn't happen, but we're going to add so much cool stuff around the prequels and in between after the prequels and before the the original three that like this will actually kind of fill it out a little bit better i think that's what i hope and seeing the bosk 
seeing some of these characters actually in the films and not in these kind of side things like the cartoons and stuff. Like you could watch those cartoons and I know they're canon, but to me, I'd rather watch the films. So I love the idea of these movies. Darth Maul to me was ruined when the movie came out. Like the build up to Darth Maul was seeing him in that trailer. Mm. Wow, doesn't he look so cool? Then the movie came out. He had like two lines shuffled around, grimaced and got cut in half. Right. Uh, horrible character. Spoiler alert, Schnepp. I know. Spoiler alert. <laughs> you kids who haven't seen the prequels yet, you should have. So, uh, yeah. So I'm really looking forward to this. And hearing that Lando's in it, like I said, Bosk, bring on the Western Star Wars for me, man. And we, sh we should point out at this point that d despite how how prevalent the word is out there about Boba Fett and, and all that. None, of, none right. of this has been confirmed it's, yet it's by Disney heavy Lucas speculation. Yeah. It's kind of the same way. It's getting gearing up more and more heavy speculation the way that Rogue One kind of did, where yeah. everyone was saying it's definitely going to be bounty hunters that steal the Death Star plans, and that might still be the case. It, it does seem like the movie is about that. We don't know if it's bounty hunters per se, but this is also another thing. Now, the other part of that report that we had got was that there are some uh, directors that are in the midst. And funny enough, when we were talking about directors, I had said that I wanted John Favreau. Right. That was the guy that I wanted. And it looks like his name has been shuffled in there, as well as Matthew Vaughn. But to throw onto that Matthew Vaughn, I also got a phone call from somebody yesterday that had told me that Vaughn, even though it makes sense that his name was thrown around in that mist, apparently there are things with his schedule and there's some other things kind of behind the scenes that might take him out of the running. Um, but I would love to see Matthew Vaughn or Favreau direct this. That'd be cool. But uh, Schnapp, how do you feel about those guys directing? Uh, either, either of those, I'd say Favreau. Just I'd rather Vaughn do uh, his own stuff. He's so great. And I want him to stay in that R-rated world, which can't be Star Wars. So, And Favreau, just ha it feels like he's a good fit. Especially for one of these standalones, so I would I would hope he he does it, John. Yeah, Matthew Vaughn. I mean, look, we know that Matthew Vaughn met with Kathleen Kennedy. I mean, we know that, and and they couldn't you know, for whether it was scheduling or whether it was creative, who knows? But for whatever reason, it didn't work out, or or just that they wanted JJ ahead of him. We don't know what the answer to that is. I've always liked the idea of a John Favreau. When you first brought up that idea, it was just it was a light bulb to me. I mean, there was a couple other names on your list. Yeah. I also said, holy crap, that would be awesome too. But Favreau was definitely a name that I would really, really get into. Speaking of Favreau, I just watched Entourage. Yeah. Wow, that dude is like the new Oprah. With like he's like he was super big and heavy, and then all of a sudden, like he was like working out and he was down like 185 pounds. And I see him in Andrage, he's like bigger than he's ever been. Oh, that's because of Chef, man. They, it's because of Chef. I wanted, all to, the eat, I wanted for to eat chef. watching Chef. How good, <laughs> by the way, I side note, totally going off side. Yeah. How good was Chef? Loved Chef. How and good I, was Chef? And I love Favreau in general. And you bring and a guy he's a like big Star that. Wars fan, by yes, the way. Yes, he's a huge Star Wars fan. You get a guy who can bring the, the action. Uh, you know, mentality that he brought to Iron Man can bring great character-driven story push that he brought to a movie like Chef that has the sense of humor that did all the other types of films that he did too. Mm -hmm. That, I think, is a really good mix for a film like this. So one other name I want to throw out there, it'll never happen in a million years, ever, ever, ever. But you want to talk about a guy who's brought heartfelt stuff, funny stuff, exciting stuff, George Miller is on a hot streak right now. Oh, Put yeah. George Miller in a bounty hunter movie fun. with, uh, with, with Boba Fett-led movie yeah. with George Miller? Come on, that, that would be cool. crazy. I would, I would, I would. Another thing about Favreau is he was trying to make the original Star Wars, John Carter of Mars. Remember, he was on oh, that right, film right, for a while, right. and that's one of the films that inspired Lucas. So yeah, yeah. you know he's a big fan. Was yeah. he on there before Stanton? Oh, yeah. He, he was trying to get that uh, going I for totally a while. I totally forgot yeah. about yeah, he that. Was, he was locked on for at least three years. Yeah. Wow. All right, next story. So Chris Weitz, who is now the writer of Rogue One, what I found pretty, and this, a lot, this story actually got from StarWars7News.com, who's so great in the amount of stories they put out there. Um, now, Chris White was, has been reaching out to astrophysicists like uh, Neil, DeGra Neil deGrasse Tyson for advice on Rogue One. Mm. They had like this whole Twitter, Twitter uh, uh, exchange, and Andy Howell was another guy who I believe works at NASA, I think, I, I believe. But they were just, it, what this story is, is the fact that White has been reaching out to these guys, direct messaging them about the actual intricate workings of space. And that's never been seen in Star Wars because there's <laughs> yeah, right. explosions that you hear in Star Wars. Right. There's oh, all yes. that, everything. So, um, and it, it, there's, I, I'm of two minds with this one. The one is like, oh, well, we're going to change up Star Wars a bit and you're going to go away from the fantasy. But then there's the everything, even the, the glimpse of the little still photos of everything I've seen of Rogue One so far, the gritty realism that they're going for, like this is a war film. I started to really like this, that he's going after these guys and talking to these mm. guys. So that, that's just me, but John? Um, to me, it's a non-issue. 
It's yeah. a non-story. I, I think any screenwriter that's going to start, like any screenwriter that was going to write a script for San Andreas, mm-hmm. you know, they went and talked to actual earthquake experts sure. and then put whatever they wanted on top of that. You know, when guys are doing movies like this, they're going to talk to people like this. Just the fact that he actually went out there and did it on Twitter and tried to get a hold of the guy who's famous. You know, so yeah. to me, it's really a non-story. But remember, even in a movie like, say, I think it was Star Trek Four. I think that was the one where uh, they went back in time, time to, get the, yeah, to get the whales, yeah. right? Star Trek is another one of those universes that's like, oh, space is the roaring engines and big explosion, all that kind of stuff. And yet, I bet they talked to some people when they were doing their whole, how do they do the time thing? The slingshot around the sun, mm, how right. would that work? So I think... In talking to guys like uh, like this, I don't think they're going to change what we know as our Star Wars universe. I have a feeling they have some pretty neat ideas about how to use a sun for something or whatever, and they just want to incorporate some stuff that would make sense. The more facts you have creatively, the more creative you can be. So it just sounds like a standard good idea for them to do. Right. Are they, they could just be checking the facts so that they can go against the facts. Yeah, they could just right. be like, well, what's right. real? What is totally real? And then we're just going to bend that, you right. know, because, yeah, fantasy. Star Wars is total fantasy when Star Destroyers start to dip down like sinking ships. I yeah. mean, you know what I mean? That's just doesn't space. Yeah, it doesn't happen. So I think what they're doing is they're probably like, well, if it's a military battle and we've got this and there's dudes with head comms, when would the sound actually, if they're floating in outer space, you know, the, yeah, they're figuring out something with subsonic transmitters and Tyson's going to be like, yeah, this, this, and this will be like, all right, cool. Throw all that away. We're doing this. Or, you know? or expanding on it because these guys know so much stuff about space and all that that no one knows right, about. And right. so to hear them, just to have a conversation with those guys for like 10 minutes, you'd probably, as a writer, you'd go, oh, wait, that's cool. He says this. And like you're saying, what if you expand off yeah. of that? And just to, well, we were thinking about doing this. Like, How would that actually work? And not not playing it by gospel and saying, well, we have to stick by the rules here, right. but going off because he might get some new information. Yeah, for sure. Cool. All right, that are that's that's all the Star Wars news stories today. Now this is going to be really interesting today. Our second segment, simply called, "What's the deal with canon?" <laughs> it is all the stuff happening in the canon universe. That's the books. That's the comics. That's the video games. That's everything that ultimately ties back to the films. And there are a lot. There's a lot of stuff that happened this week in canon. Now, the first story here, I've got to give you guys a spoiler warning. We normally don't spoil plot points that happen in the comics, but this was too big. And this, it's all over it's the everywhere. web. It's everywhere. It's My everywhere. My Twitter thing is filled with it right now. Yeah, yeah. So what I would say is that you know, if you want to fast forward through the through the canon part today, if you know, if you're going to read Star Wars issue six, then you do that and then come back to this because we are going to spoil it. We're also talking about Darth Vader. We're talking six. Star Wars six. We're talking Darth Darth uh, Vader six, and we're talking Leia four. Now let's start with the big one. With Star Wars <laughs> Six, okay. This is the one that everybody's talking. Even everybody who doesn't read the comics, this is the one they're talking about. Everyone's yeah. talking about this one because this. Now, I think that the first, the first thing is that they're going to sell a lot of comics because of this story, regardless of what you think about the ultimate twist here. What I like about this one, first of all, is that Star Wars Six ties into Darth Vader Six, mm-hmm. and Boba Fett's been after Luke. They have, they're having this whole exchange. It's, this, it's a big confrontation in Obi Wan's hut. That all goes down, and it actually ties back into Darth Vader. Issue six and and Vader finding out some some information. Now I I, I got to ask because I did yeah. not read issue six yeah. except for the big spoiler oh, you at didn't the read. end. Okay. Now when Boba Fett and Luke are having their exchange, yeah. do they pick up from their conversation in the Christmas special? <laughs> That's like, is that a continuation of that conversation? Thank you have? killed God. my dinosaur. Yeah. Right. Thank God the Christmas special is no longer canon. Leland Chi, by the way, was amazing at uh, the canon panel. Someone asked them, they go, like, so the Star Wars Christmas special, canon? No. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Um, so we, now here's the big spoiler. At the very as as Leia Leia and Han are on on this planet and and Lon, Han breaks out this Carillion wine which I mm-hmm. loved and he's he's got kind of a little seduction thing going yeah. on kind of they have this banter the banter between Han and Leia are amazing in this comic and then the, then the Falcon pulls up and starts firing at him and they're like well what's this well, that's not the Falcon it's not the Falcon I mean, excuse me a, sh- a ship that looks like the Falcon yeah. um, it pulls up starts firing down at them and what happens so this this bounty hunter that's been looking for Han the n- previous issue shows up. So who's that? And the, then the, the, the bounty hunter reveals that it's a woman. And she says, "I'm his wife." And you, and what was her name? Something so Isha, Isha, Sana, like Sana Isha Solo, Sana Solo, Solo, or Sana, Solo. Like Sana, Sana Solo, and and you go, huh? Wait a minute. This it just it blows your mind. But the goaltender for the American women's soccer team. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So hearing this, 
your first reaction of hearing that Han Solo possibly could have a wife, because that's how the issue ends. It ends with that he has a wife, and he's got his hands down. He's like, oh, no. How do you feel about this, uh, this new revelation about uh, the smuggler? I don't know. You know, I was like, wow, Han Solo's got a lot of secrets. And uh, then I thought maybe this has something to do with Lando. Is there something going on? You right, because we should we should mention that the woman uh, was African American as well. Yeah, too. and that's not the only reason that it's Lando, but it's also the ship looks a lot like the Millennium Falcon. There's a lot of like things there where you're like, all right, there's there's some backstory that's going to have to, you know, Solo, you got some splaining to do, right. you know, um, John. There's one of two things. This can go one of two ways. Um, way number one, which I am actually. Fairly, I feel fairly confident that it's going to go this way, way number one. The very first frame of the next issue is going to be Leia going, you have a wife? And him going, no, she's not my wife. But she keeps It's some crazy woman who's right. insisting that she's Or they're engaged Solo. and it never happened. Yes, yeah. exactly. That's yeah. a really good yeah. point. And, and you know, uh, we were, Dennis and I were talking previously about this reminds me a lot, for those of you who watch Firefly, it reminds me a lot about that, that one episode of Firefly where he had the girl that he mar married and all mm. that kind of stuff. So I believe, and the, just the way that frame was, it's like Han wasn't, oh my God, it's my wife. It was right. just like... No, oh, no. Like, so I, I just get the feeling that it's probably going to be crazy lady, not really married, whatever. That's probably the way it's going to go. The second way, if it does not go that way, concerns me to no end. If this is his wife, right? Then this is the fulfillment of all my nightmares and, and fears about this whole thing, about all the books and comic books now being canon. Because if that's his wife, what the comic books have now done is fundamentally changed or altered our perception of the movies themselves, which should be untouched. Because now by introducing, if, if Solo's got a wife and now there's all this other kind of backstory, that fundamentally alters our perception of Han Solo in the movies. It is altering the way we look at the movies, and that is something that I've really been afraid of when they said that the comic books and the novels and all this kind of stuff are actually going to be canon, that it's not just great little standalone stories, it's stuff that's going to F with the actual canon of the trilogy. And that's the part that worries me. So, number one option... It's probably much ado about nothing. She's just some crazy lady or some misunderstanding. Was engaged once. I really like that theory. Option number two, I am very afraid of. Anyway, Chris, what do you think? Well, you I, see it? I will tell you that as far as I don't mind when it alters the way we look at the movies when it's a good thing. <laughs> like if there's like like if there's certain ways like oh well that's interesting that, that 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 went down that way because now I know so much more but like look at the Clone Wars for me the Clone Wars I have really like if I had just seen the prequels and never watched the Clone Wars all the way through I'd still have the vision of what I saw Anakin was but I saw him further developed in the Clone Wars in that series that now I look at him differently even in these comics when and and, and as I watch the movies I do but. I'm hoping with your two suggestions here that that the former is actually is what option it is. number one. <laughs> yes, because when you have that option number one, because the way that they set it up, they're they're hopefully setting it up that way, because then it's like, well, no. When I was younger, I did this. She's been chasing me around. I haven't been back. I was here's a little. You get maybe you'll learn a little bit more about what Han a Solo. scoundrel. Well, yeah, right. But but, yeah. You, but you'll learn more about him. You learn a little bit more about his history. That at one point he thought he was going to go that route, get married, and then he took off and he became a smuggler. I'm okay with learning backstory that way. That he was supposed to be married. But if he actually was married and it is his wife, then he's kind of a scumbag um, <laughs> yeah. because he's running around in the first one, not even mentioning her. He's, he's avoiding child he's care payments. Right. And, and he took the family dog with him. And, <laughs> and, and so Solo, you, deadbeat dad. Right. That's <laughs> really, we, get, we go from Han Solo to Han divorced. Yeah. It's like, so you have this whole thing. Scoundrel to scumbag. <laughs> Scoundrel to scumbag. And, you ha and then what happens, because this is only a two or three year period in between episode four and five. So... During that period, something's that happened with this woman that he just completely forgets about her because then he goes on Hoth and tries to romance Leia the whole time. So you've got to get rid of I think it was to sell the, the story, to get the story out there, to blow up the headlines and, and get Marvel and the comics really in the forefront. And they have succeeded in doing that. Yeah, I don't know if it was the right way to do it. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what else it could be? Because all the stuff we could talk about, and going back to that, uh, that one reference we were talking about with Firefly, is that... It's what I could buy into and would be consistent is hey, yeah, five years ago I was on, you know, 
uh, Alderaan 4, and there was this uh, party one night. I took this young girl right. home. Didn't know that in her culture, you when you take somebody home from that particular bar, when the moon is high, you are now spouses. And I didn't know that. Took right. a, they do that, then that's consistent with his character. It really has no impact on what the actual story is, and we can live with that. But that that goes more to option number one, yeah. and which, we, which is just fine if that's the way it goes. Well, I got to say, all this marriage stuff and him being married was not the biggest thing to me in that comic book. The biggest thing to me was Darth Vader finally realizing. Well, I want to go. That's 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 Vader four also because that's that also happens in Darth Vader four. In six, you mean six? Excuse yeah, me, Darth the Vader six. they're both in the same thing. Yeah, but that's why I was saving it's it. It's an amazingly well drawn yeah. issue by John Cassidy. I love his art on the Star Wars, the main Star Wars title. Laraka's also kicking it on Darth Vader. Amazing artwork, fantastic artwork. But the Boba Fett fighting Luke Skywalker before he's actually a Jedi mm. is really cool, and it's really well realized. It's intercut with uh, Han and Leia. It's really well done. And then that Boba Fett comes back empty-handed, but has a name, and it's Skywalker. Yeah. And that's when Vader just breaks that break window. It. That's incredible. And that's the scene. That's the Which scene that happens. Some other concerns. I do, and I want to bring that up in, in Vader when we talk about Vader six here. But also going into that, what that goes back to the point you made as far as the movies. It's interesting now that when you watch that scene in Episode five, when Luke is trying to save his friends on Bespin, and he sees Boba Fett. Mm. Now you know that's not their. That wasn't their first encounter, right. and it doesn't. That doesn't change anything or ruin anything because no. they never really have any exchanges. So I no. think they do have a history now, and that's kind of cool. But now let's go. We'll move on to our next uh, kind of semi little review here and that's of Darth Vader number six now Vader has been really been putting through the grinder with the Emperor, the Emperor yeah. and I love this whole thing that's going on I, at first I was a little skeptical with the clones but I like where, where with the cyborgs that they created I, I like where this is going to where they're basically testing out these cyborgs against Vader and just smacking them around and then one of the cyborgs saves the other one whatever it is but it's the Emperor testing him, teaching him the ways of the Sith, going, you've got to be the most powerful one. If you fail, then you're not worthy. But if you do it, great. And that's the same thing that happened in Lords of the Sith. It's con that, This is the consistency that I do enjoy. Um, it, but the inconsistency, now, going to your concern that you've had beforehand, and I've been like, ah, give it a chance. I started to, <laughs> as that point, because <laughs> here's what, the moment that is awesome, when Boba Fett comes, because he also happens in episode six, he shows up and he goes, I found the name. Uh, he got away, but the name is Skywalker. And the coolest moment of the whole issue is when Vader he, he clenches his fist, start, the thing starts to crack, and he starts to have a flashback of, of the, the prequels and, mm -hmm. his, and his mind. He, he sees all these moments. He's Padme, the Emperor lying to him. But what that made me realize is it contradicts the movie. It contradicts number five. When Vader goes and summons the Emperor, the Emperor, or the Emperor summons Vader, he says to him, we have a new enemy that, who blew up the Death Star. This is the offspring of Anakin Skywalker. And he was like, how is this possible? So he didn't know. Well, he was lying to the that's, Emperor. That's what could have been, and that's possible, because he does lie to him in issue one of Vader. Mm -hmm. So that's where my brain is going, oh, and hopefully he's lying to him. So that, that was just mine. But the, mo the moment's remember, awesome. He's ready to take over. He's like, let's join me, and we'll you know, right. throw the emperor over, you know, take care of him, and you'll be my uh, Rule new father and son. Yeah. Right. You know, it's something we've never brought up. This has always kind of bothered me a little bit. It's like, I, I would think, like, let's say I'm around in World War II, right? I'm a freedom fighter, and, mm -hmm. and uh, Adolf Hitler just had a newborn son. And he named him, what's a good strong German he first name? Changed it, yeah. Nouch changed. Hitler, right? right. Uh, Nouch is not a real German name. I, anyway, so that. if I were to take him and hide him, the first thing I would do is name him Elijah Horowitz. Right. Not like Leia, him, like Leia Organa. Yeah, right. yeah. Not, not Benny Hitler. Yeah, and right. hope that nobody ever finds him. Let's take him back to Vader's home planet. And tag on that last name with him there. Well, those that always are, kind of bugged me. Those were the ones that that these. There's some mistakes that from the prequels that they can retcon. There's others that they can't. Yeah, yeah but uh, also remember he was a Jedi, and all those files have been destroyed, and then he transformed to Darth Vader, and all, the only people who knew that he transformed were the Jedi. And sure, but killed. he know, but he would know. Like, the Vader should know. There's a guy running around Sky, on his home planet named Skywalker. It, it, but that's it, there's just some things that, that you as a fan you just got to go. Okay, because there's, there's nothing that they can do at this point. There's really nothing they can do. So, but I, I, I really enjoyed both Star Wars issue six and Vader six. I enjoyed them both. 
I want to see how this this pans out with Han uh, for his wife, but I think this week, and we'll talk about the other one in a second. But Vader six is my favorite. But did you did you didn't get a chance to? to no, I, I haven't got up to Vader six yet. No, okay, yet. I'm curious to what you guys that are reading the issues. You know, and I was we always rank these comics. Right now, I go back and forth, but I always I still have Kanan as my number one with Vader right there. Um, and then I actually Son of Dathomir I never put in there. It was only a four issue run, but I still that that was pretty great too. Then I would say. Um, Star Wars and then Leia which we'll get into now the next issue was Leia issue number four I liked the sec I think second issue of Leia I haven't liked any other ones and this doesn't change for me I don't uh, the difference from the artwork I agree with you so much that the artwork's so cool in Star Wars Invader I know that this is uh, this dude's completely style completely agree with where you're going with the that the style of this the, the artwork is it, I get it but I don't feel it works for me Plus, I read this issue twice, and I still don't know what's going on. Like, I don't care. I'm going back, and I'm like, I, Leia, and then Neem Nub is in there for a second. Okay, he's like the focus of it. I'm like, oh, and then there's still the politics of it. It was, I, I'm lost on this thing. I don't. I just, I've, it's totally lost me. Complete. Um, and I th and now at the very end, it's a spoiler again too. She gets taken back by the emperor, the empire. Like the, she kind of negotiates for her, herself, I guess, because of, there was this internal spy that's been working there. They figured it out, and they do like kind of an exchange, and Leia sacrifices herself, and and again, now the Empire's got her. Again, this is right after Episode Four, so they've just gotten her back again, and now she's back with the Empire. Now, who's is Han and, and Luke going to go rescue her again, or is or or do they hopefully thwart this thing before? It, I, I, I hope they hatch a plan where they disguise themselves as stormtroopers and break into the prison <laughs> unit to right. get her out. I think that would be the way it's to a, go. It's a really That's good That's some one. compelling storytelling. Yeah, but they got to do it originally. They have Luke dressed as the stormtrooper. Ah, yeah, good yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. A little idea. twist on it. Well, they have, twist. you know, female uh, dressed up as Luke Skywalker now. Yeah, totally there. wearing Luke's outfit yes, there, too. too. Uh, okay, well, those know, are... T Terry Dodson and his wife are the artists on this, and they've they do Spider-Man and mm -hmm. Black Cat, so they're really, just like a lot of these other artists who are on the, the whole Star Wars team is, are... Very famous, like Cassidy drew an incredible run on Captain America and X Men. La Roca did X Men for years, and these guys did Spider Man. But it seems to me like the artwork, at least Cassidy and La Roca style, really they're really fitting the Star Wars yeah. universe. They're really drawing everything very. It feels like when you see Darth Vader, it's like I don't mind it if they're using photo references. Mm -hmm. I like that, you know. So this is a little, a little more cartoony, even though it's, you know, it's pretty yeah. tight pencils. I, it just feels like a Saturday morning cartoon mm -hmm. that would be on, like in the '80s. That I just, it, the writing's not as solid, I mm -hmm. think, as as the rest of it. I, it just hasn't gotten me yet, too. I know it's a limited run, so I won't be sad when it goes. I hate to say it. Um, anything Star Wars, obviously, you know, I try to be optimistic about, but this has kind of lost me. Uh, okay. So moving on, this is really cool because as I went to Star Wars Celebration, myself, Maud Garrett, and Ellis, we got to see Rebels, The Siege of Lothal, which is going to be like that. It's like a little mini movie before season two premieres. Now It I, functions as episode one yeah, and the, two the, it's of weird. season two. It, that's what the, I mean, it, last season they did the same thing. Yeah. And it, it, I guess the, it kind of counted as a mini movie, but the actual season, won't, it's like this premieres in July, but the actual season won't start until I think like September or whatever it is. So I was able to get a screener of this. So I was able to, let, these guys were able to check it out. And I've already given my thoughts. I'll, I want to talk about you guys afterwards, but I want to know your initial thoughts, John, when you saw this. I know you were kind of looking forward to it. Yeah, What did you think? Um, the first five to ten minutes, I'm like, eh. And after that, it just ramps. Yeah. And after that, it just ramps. And it gets more intense, and it gets more gritty. And, you know, one of one of my fears at the end of season one, and everybody, I'm a big fan of Rebels season one. At the end of season one, when Vader shows up, my little bit of a fear was, uh, they're going to wuss him a bit. Because, I mean, even though we've seen Tarkin take people out and they're not afraid to go dark in this show, they're not going to really have Vader be Vader. Vader is Vader yeah. in this. And he's kicking ass and taking names. And it's just, it's glorious the way they portray him. Having James Earl Jones doing the voice is just magnificent at the same time. But not only is he powerful, you understand he's always one step ahead of everything the group of rebels is trying to do right. and think that they're doing. We we see that a lot more, like, oh, I almost gave a spoiler. We see some pretty dark stuff actually happen in this episode. And the action is good, the dialogue's great, some cameos happen that got all of us you know, there that were sitting there getting very happy about it. 
you know, I said that when I, I wrote on Twitter, when I first saw the first episode of Rebel Season 1, I said, this is the first Star Wars thing that has made me feel like it's Star Wars again. And this it, Season 2 just looks like it's going to keep going in that direction. I was very happy with this little mini-movie, first two episodes, whatever you call it. It's exciting. I cannot wait for the rest of you to see it, because I think you're going to be happy with it. Now, this I can't wait to get your take, because I've been trying to get Schneff to watch Rebels for like the last like five, six months, yeah. telling him all the time. And then basically the way I sold it was the way I sold it to you guys. I said, all right, Schneff. All you got to do, dude, is just watch the season two trailer. And if you like that, yeah. then you got to watch it. And he's like, all right, all right. And, he, and you dug the trailer. Yeah. So now you get to see, this is the first thing of Rebels you've ever seen. Ever. Yeah. What were your thoughts? I loved it. I, I was really shocked and surprised because, look, you know, I saw the trailer and I wasn't a big fan of the way the animation was done in the Clone Wars. It just still had a little bit, it was still a little bit like wooden woodcut robot kind of, it, it just didn't have that feeling. Well, they smoothed it out. They they did something. They refined the characters. They got the the backgrounds a little tighter. All the all the ships have that a little bit more closer to the way the the Star Wars movie ships look. The designs, everything just is a little bit closer. And uh, honestly, like the first five minutes of this, you know, we're not going to do spoilers, but I felt like the back and forth pitter patter with the characters. I was like, ah, eh, there's no weight to it. I'm not. Uh, you know, it feels like a kiddie cartoon. I felt the same way, yeah. Of you know, like you're like, okay, I get it. It's for kids. You know, they're they're in Tie Fighters. They're blowing people up, but it's not. It doesn't. There's no weight to it. It feels like it's gonna just be a flat, you know, flappy episode or whatever. And that was how I felt. Like I said, for the first five minutes, then I got drawn in. I was like, oh wait, I remember that character from the Clone Wars because I did watch a couple of Clone Wars. And then I was like, oh wait. I, I like that character. I kept asking him, who's that guy? He's like, that guy's actually a Jedi. I was like, all right, I like that character. And so as the as this like mini movie moved along and then Vader comes in and it really is like, it's James Earl Jones and it's Darth Vader and he looks cool. I like the refined kind of like slightly Ralph more McQuarrie, samurai yeah. style. Yeah, it's yeah. Ralph McQuarrie, just a little tighter, way more. Like every time you see him, it's like, I want that framed. I want yeah. that as a painting. I want that as a picture. Like yeah. these, and yeah, these incredible pictures of him with flames behind him or his entire guard behind him or with the lightsaber on. It's like, it's really cool. And I love the story. I loved, you didn't know where it was going. The path of the story was great. There were a lot of unexpected hitches and betrayals and this and that. And it was, it was fun watching the entire thing all the way up till it ended. And I didn't want it to end. So I hate you because now this is another thing that I have to watch. You know, and, and it but gets, it's great. It was it, fantastic. And I think we're really going to get start to get into the meat of it, too, because the more and more as this thing goes on, and because of the rumors going around, too, I really think this is going to tie in heavily to Rogue One when we get closer. Um, we'll see. But what this really... I, you really have to give a pat in the back here to Kinberg and Filoni for what yeah, they do. You can definitely. tell the amount of love that these guys have yeah. for Star Wars. I mean, you feel it. It's not just capitalizing on a popular thing. These are Star Wars fans, Well, and man. Filoni ran the ship for Clone Wars. And yeah. He, he literally is the guy who's like bringing everything well, together. And, well, with Lucas on Clone Wars. Now, it was... They had enough right. confidence for them to go, dude, this is yours. And he's the Lucas yeah. of Rebels. He really is. And you can tell. Um, and it also gives me a lot of confidence. It feels more Lucas than Lucas. It is true. Yeah, it does. Well, it really it does. does. You, you say that because like everything with Vader and how we said that's Vader, that's Vader right before he boards the Rebels in episode four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's him. Like you see every the way that he's acting, that is him. Like the power. And you and I had a conversation outside of Star Wars uh, celebration, and you had voiced those concerns where you said, uh, you know, if he's battling these guys and they're and they're able to, and I go. Oh, I said, yeah. If he fights, we see in the trailer that Vader fights Kanan right. and, uh, Ezra. and and Ezra. And I said, if this isn't a completely one-sided fight, that's BS. I said, and he said. It's a one-sided fight. <laughs> I said this. Like, I said this is Tyson in his prime. Uh, yeah. I, he, it's just, and this isn't spoiling anything because of the trailer that one. Boom! Get out of here! And, just, yeah. just, it's and like, he's just like doing that shit to the kid. Yeah, he's like, you can't, you can't. And the direction of it too, because like one of the things they did so well, and that they are doing so well, and even better in these episodes than in season one, is that they're using the visuals to tell the story right. in many ways. Mm -hmm. Because every time there are three key scenes when Vader shows up in the scene, like there are three times when the scene is already happening, and then Vader shows. Right. And every time Vader shows, the, the way artistically they reveal his uh, his entrance into the scene it's like you just sit back and you go oh shit 
Right, yep. right. Yeah. Like, oh, boy, it's, <laughs> it's going to hit the fan now. Right. Like, and, and, it was beautifully yeah, done. And I will say that um, I don't want. I, there's there's another appearance by by a few characters. One that is actually not voiced by the original actor, but you can't tell. Can we talk about who one of the actors is? That shows up. That's from Clone Wars. Can we talk about that? Um, is well, it, I don't. Is that I, already. Revealed? I mean, no, no. It's in the trailer. Ahsoka. Yeah, Ahsoka. Ahsoka shows yeah, that's up. that's, yeah. In the, that's well, in she the, was in season one. She was in season one. Yeah, so and, you know she's going to be in. Season yeah, two. and the tra- she's in the trailer. So I like, and you know what? I'm interested to hear it because you weren't a fan of Ahsoka in the Clone Wars. No. How did you like her in this episode? Um, she didn't do anything. Right, but, Wait, but I mean, uh, she didn't annoy you. Until, yeah, there's for nine tenths of the episode, there's really nothing for her to do. Uh, and that's that's neither that's neither a good thing or a bad thing. There just wasn't anything for that character to do. Yeah. They kept the focus of the show on the, this rebels team that mm-hmm. we've come to know and love through season one. And then she has a key scene near the end of of this mini movie, these yeah. episodes we just saw, whatever. That was very well done. It was incredibly that, well done. Yeah. It was like right out of the way that they would do it in like Empire Strikes yeah. Back, that look away, like, yeah. you know, that kind of and stuff. And we know she's going to be around for at least, because we've seen her in other things in the trailer for yeah. season two, but if she were to disappear right now, she played a valuable narrative function yeah. just for yeah. that part alone. So, And, and this, is, this Ahsoka is a very different character than the one we had in the yeah. Clone Wars. Right. So, like, hey, look, everybody, I hated that character. Hate that character. Even if she evolved through the season. But yeah, I did. Really? But this this is now years, years later. Right. They've made it clear this is a very different character than that one was now. So take it with an open mind. Just yeah. go into it. Now let's see what this character is. And so far they're using her very well. Yeah. Call it like it is. She's, right. They're using her really well. So when that comes out, it's in July. Raving report, raving reviews across the council. Check it out. If Again, I, I, I beg you guys, if you have been hesitant about watching Rebels, do the same thing Schnepp did. Watch the trailer for season two. And if that interests you, then go back, watch season one, and get ready for season then two. Then you must wait, young Padawan. <laughs> That's right. All right. Uh, next story. Now, this is... This this is pretty interesting. There was a, this was the book. There's a bunch of new book titles announced. And there's a, was the book con or coverage from book con 2015. Now this was, the, I think, believe these are more Marvel type hardcover books that that are coming out. But there's a bunch of announcements here. One of them was the, uh, the they're doing all the films. They're going to do those in hardcovers. I don't know when episode four comes out, but episode five, the hardcover comes out August 12th. Very interested and excited to see what new things they can throw in there little hesitant about seeing exactly you know don't throw too much away from the movie if there's some added scenes that are that add to the story i'm okay with it then i think return of the jedi is going to be november 11th is when the hardcover for that one comes out now this was an interesting one and this is why i start to think that this obi-wan thing might have some weight to it is because in july um they were going to have an obi-wan standoff comic that takes place about five years prior to episode four then uh, the fact that they're interested they're bringing this Isn't out that there rebels timeline exactly yeah yeah that's what i'm saying so it's five years prior well rebels i think it was like four three three, three and four but three around four. that time so things are going out they're, they're linking all this this is by design they're linking everything together one way or another whether it be rogue one these these prequel uh, these uh prequel books all this stuff so uh then there's another one that they said that issue nine, this is interesting because I actually got this report before I read issue six of Star Wars, is that Star Wars issue nine has Leia and Han in the background and then what appears to be Sana Solo up top. Mm. So we'll see how that plays out. And then we talked about issue six and then they're just previewing more Star Wars. It's a lot of comic book stuff, Kanan more. And then I think that they finally have some stuff on Lando. And the Lando comes out in July. Lando's particular series. And this takes place in between episode four and episode five, right before episode five, which is interesting to me because I want to see how he became yeah, the, the leader of Bespin. Yeah, Best how did he yeah, do that from, from where we see him in Rebels yeah. to where he's now running, running Best Man. So that, that'd be very interesting in Cloud City. Um, and then they're, they're following it up quick with August as another Lando. But then what starts to happen is we get into, once we hit the, like the September area, is when we start to get into the journey, journey to the Force Awakens. This is where all the exciting stuff is coming out. Everything post Jedi, and we get that Shattered Empire, Star Wars Shattered Empire. Uh, that issue comes out in September, I think, or yeah, September. And when, when does Aftermath drop again? September. It, that's it September, all. It yeah. all starts to come out in that time. So there's a lot of stuff coming out soon, and like I said, I think it's all by design, and I think. 
uh, it's around the board here that everybody really wants to know what's happening in the post Jedi area. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. We want to see that. That. Era. Yeah. I think you know you were bringing up the prequels and how you you wanted to see stuff move forward. I think we're gonna get that, but I I don't mind like the the first couple of years now that they're bringing back the Star Wars universe, but it's thirty years later. Right. There's like this rich tapestry to get all this backstory from Jedi to the Force Awakens. Well, see, I know that's what I want. Well, we're gonna, I, I want but I post think we're, Jedi. We're going to get to that because they have what I feel personally is they have to retcon a lot of the garbage that was made right. after the prequels. They have to like look, we're not none of that's real. We're keeping those prequels. We're keeping the Clone Wars, but then we're going to like, you know, kind of stitch together right. a cooler universe. Mm -hmm. So you get ready for this yeah, post stuff. And you know I think they have to do that. Yeah, and it's the appetizer. Yeah. It's the appetizer stuff because it's still it's quenching your thirst for the Star Wars stuff because you still get I mean even even Dark Disciple which is taking place during the, right after the Clone Wars. That's going to at least you're still getting Star Wars stuff, but it's this push that's happening here in September of the post Jedi stuff. People are going to lose their minds about because it's two or three months right before the Force Awakens right. drops. You're going to find tidbits in there that you're going to go, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, and that's what brings us to our next story here because that's what I want to get into. Our next story, this was just dropped today, and it's Star Wars Uprising, which is a mobile game, was officially not only announced. They dropped a mini trailer, and I love the graphic that Ray brought up because who is that guy? Mm -hmm. Who is that guy? Mm -hmm. And what what point is he gonna what, what's he gonna do in this story? Because what we're seeing in this trailer is that this voiceover from this dude, right. who's like almost like a President Snow or something, yes. is saying, no, 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 don't listen yeah. to these rumors. The, the Death Star's still around. And as he's saying this, there's this rebel who's going up to huts and showing all these people that the Death Star got blown to smithereens. The Emperor's fine. Right. Everything's good. It reminds me of that Iraqi uh, information minister during right. the Iraq Saddam war. Right. No, That's there right. are no American soldiers in Iraq. What are you mm -hmm. talking about? You see the tanks rolling behind mm -hmm. him. And I, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's exactly what it is, too. Oh, yeah. And you have this dude, and whoever this guy is behind him. Right. Looks like a steampunk guy, dude. Yeah, yeah. The enforcer. Now, we're, we're looking, we're looking, this guy's got to probably be 40, 45. Right. I'm, I don't know. I could be, like, I, the, in the, the video game, this guy could die by the end of the game. Right. I don't know. But he's around 40, 45, you'd say, maybe even 50. I'd say that, closer to 50. That could be Von Sydow for all we know. Right. Well, here's the thing. Cover his face in your mind. Er just erase the the head, right? Yeah. Who do you, look at the body. Who does who is that? Would you say um, uh, what's uh, that's Thrawn? Thrawn's outfit? Thrawn. So, so I'm not saying that's Thrawn. I'm saying Thrawn. That I, I, this is a Grand Admiral. I believe this oh, is yeah, a, Grand a Grand Admiral, Admiral who's, sure. who's calling the shots here. So. For sure. Um, what did you guys think of the trailer? I liked it. I love the voiceover, and I love the the opposite. Like everything the guy was saying, they're showing the opposite. Like check it out, the Death Stars. The Death Stars here. Why don't you relax? And it just it showed like a universe in chaos, and there's yeah. like people picking sides. Like whose side are you on? Are you think the Empire is obviously going down? Yet other people are like, no, no, no. I'm still with the Empire. So right. I think it's kind of cool. And like you were saying, it's going to be a phone app game. I think yeah, it's, it's a mobile, mobile app. It's a yeah. mobile game. I don't. That's the only part that I don't get. So. Well, well, I, the reason why I think that I understand it is because if this is going to tell a story, like putting in that time period we just talked about as far as, I mean, and by time period, I mean uh, when they're announcing all this journey, journey to the Force Awakens, if they put it there, mobile app, then they're going to announce some new games at E3, whatever those might be. Right. Um, so we're going to get, once we hit like August, September, we're going to get a flood of new stuff. Are we going to get some Bioware I information? Think so. well, that's I think so. Remember, like the world of mobile gaming is huge right now right. you knew they were going to release yeah. a a flagship title like this for mobile i yeah. mean i think it was just a matter of time I, uh, the only thing i'm left a little dissatisfied with by the trailer is i didn't get any sense about okay gameplay why what is this exactly. game exactly that's I, I, what i was no, asking I christian like, oh, cool, cool story but yeah. what's the is game is this like farmville <laughs> or like yeah, you know exactly. what am i doing and, and am i moving so power pods around i'm like i don't know if what if i like that you it, know and and i 100% agree with you guys and understand me as far as gamers go too. I get everyone that has that concern. For me, I don't care. I just It literally could be about moving a, a soda can from right to left. That's the whole game as long as it furthers along the story. No. To learn what the story no. is. You but are farming. Say, Young I, Jedi, I you are farming. The does say out you of can food. either be, you can be a smuggler or you can, oh, there, okay. I think it gave you three options yeah, for characters. Cool. And one was a smuggler. I can't remember what the other two were. So Farmer. It, it might be no. some kind of first person <laughs> thing. Because remember, they just released on mobile uh, Knights of the Old Republic, yeah. right? Yeah. So clearly these types of games can work in a mobile platform. Mm -hmm. 
and maybe this is a, a like a refresh, something like that. Yeah. And they're going to try to do that RPG, and tell the story maybe, that way. Yeah, maybe even RPG on mobile. I mean, who knows? All right. That's it. That's the canon stuff today. Uh, as we move on, what we normally do here, we address the council. Now, what's that? Every week, somebody on the council has a topic that they want to bring up. They address you out there. They address us. And then we talk about it after that council member is done. Today, Obi-John Kenobi has the floor. What do you got? You know, the other day, I was having a, a conversation with a friend of mine, as often happens with conversations with friends of mine, the, uh, the topic of Star Wars came up. And uh, my buddy has not really ever been all that into Star Wars. And he said, you know, what is it with you? Why do you love Star Wars so much? I mean, I get it. It's because it's an action adventure and you saw it when I was a kid. And I was like, I remember I stopped for a second. I thought, well, what is it? Why do we love Star Wars so much? And that's what I want to talk about here. This is why I want to address the council. Why is it that we would do an entire show around one series of films? That we would, you know, wear shirts and helmets and whatever and, like, name our pets and everything. And so much of our childhood and adulthood is shaped by it. And I want to suggest this. From a strictly movie-making point of view, why do we love Star Wars? Well, yes, it is a great space opera. Yes, it was wild fantasy and adventure. And yes, it was all those great things. But there were many other films at the time and many other films since and many other films like that today that are great wild adventure and have grand scopes and things like that. What I think really drove Star Wars to being such a pivotal part of who we are collectively as a culture and as a, as a pop culture even is a couple of key things. First of all, it was the first film that a lot of us of my generation can even remember being that broad in scope. Now, there were sci-fi films and things like that, but Star, for instance, something like Star Trek, while we understood that the universe was vast, stories were always told in very confined spaces. And that's, that's not a knock on Star Trek, that's part of the brilliance of what they did. But Star Wars felt like the story was being played out on a galactic-wide stage at all times, that they're jumping between planet to planet and all these different things, and that was huge and wild to our imaginations. We also came across Luke, you know, a character with a lot of people identified with as you know somebody who had dreams and it wasn't just young people it was anybody who saw themselves standing on that sand dune looking out across the dual suns and thinking and imagining their future and their visions what they want and so many of us attached ourselves to that and identified with that but I want to take it two steps further about what really I think separated Star Wars from a lot of the films and, and really drove it into our hearts the first thing I want to talk about is it really is a story, when you look at Star Wars as a whole, it's a story about redemption. And redemption, to me, is the greatest single theme in any story you can tell. It's part of the reason why Bohemir is my favorite character in Lord of the Rings, because of that whole thing about redemption. But when you look at each character along the way, there is an element of redemption to all of them. Whether you look at Princess Leia, who, after the destruction of Alderaan, there's a part of her that has a mission of redemption to right this wrong, to finish the mission, to make what just happened to her home world all worth it. Princess Leia was on a mission of redemption. When you look at Obi-Wan Kenobi, at first we think he's just some hermit in the sand, but then when you realize as the story progresses, he has a huge history of, let's call what it is, failure. He has a huge history of failure along the way, something that he needs to set right. For Obi-Wan Kenobi, a lot of that mission, going to the cantina, renting out the Millennium Falcon and flying off to that Death Star, his story is about redemption. When you finally get to the end of the original trilogy and ultimately you get this guy who was just any other mustache twirling villain from any other film, Darth Vader, and then you realize in, episode two, in the second episode of the original trilogy that there's a little bit more of a spark of humanity in him than you thought when he displays love for his son. And by the end of that trilogy, you realize this was a story about redemption, about coming back from something that we fell into originally. And I think there's a part of our spirits and our souls that really identifies with that because all of us, on one level or another, in one time or another in our lives, there's something that we yearn for redemption for. But it's more than just redemption as well. I think Star Wars and the type of films that it was, it communicated something to us of an audience. It told us, don't look at people in one brief glimpse. Because when you look at Obi-Wan Kenobi in one brief glimpse, what do you see? You just see that little hermit who maybe has a fancy light sword. But when you look at him and you look past the surface, you see there's something so much more rich, so much more of value to him than what you get on the original surface. Or and then fast forward again to Darth Vader. Once again, he just, sh just shatters that whole image we had of him of the mustache twirling villain with the damsel in distress laying on the train tracks there was so much more to him there was still that spark of good in him that only luke could see and even us as audience members couldn't see and i think when we sit back and think about star wars it was that motion picture that yes 
big explosions and big spaceships and swinging across the cavern with the pretty girl on your arm, who ends up being your sister? Yes, it has all of that in there too. But it went deeper than that. And where I think it made its real impact on us was that we identified with these characters. We identified with what they were hoping for, what they were reaching for, and we saw things in these characters that we realized we need to see in other people around us. It was an idea of hope, an idea of redemption, an idea of really seeing people for who they are and not just what they are on the surface. It was the first film that I can remember ever seeing as a kid that brought all of that together into one motion picture that moved me and stirred me and millions of us in that way. And that is why a movie from the 1970s with, by today's standard, laughable visual effects maintains one of the most treasured, one of the most precious cinematic or storytelling experiences we have ever had. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I love Star Wars. Well said, my friend. That was awesome. For you guys now, what we want you to do, as we do on Jedi Council every week, make sure you go in the comments. And because of that, this is a, this is a great time for you guys. And I want to see you guys really get involved. Tell us in the comment section why you love Star Wars. You have, you guys are here. You're watching. You're Star Wars fans, or even if you're brand new Star Wars fans, go into the comment section and let us know why you love it so much. Talk to other Star Wars fans about their moments, your moments. That's why we're here. Now, speaking of you guys, that is the next part of this show. We we have take we. Have a little bit of time left we're going to do it's twitter time we're going to answer a bunch of your questions you guys have submitted throughout the week throughout the weeks and hashtag it every week amc jedi council and we'll get your question on the show so let's get to the first question today all right this one comes in i believe from matthew mcdonald and it says what happened to darth maul after the clone wars what are the odds that maul shows up in rebels and how would he interact with vader I don't think he's showing up in Rebels. I don't think he's going to interact with Vader. I think what we just said before, if he shows up, it's Obi-Wan Kenobi. That's it. Anybody else feel any different? Well, to answer the first part of the question, what happened to him, oh, right. in in uh, the Clone Wars, you find out that he survived being cut in half. Uh, he somehow pieced together or was put together with a big spider body. But he fixed uh, that, though, and made him just the legs. Yes, and he yeah. eventually got rid of that. So uh, who the, was the producer on Superman? Uh, John Peters. John Peters definitely got a spider. Apparently had, had yeah. his hand in that yeah. a little bit. <laughs> so he comes back and then he actually has a little story arc of his own with his brother as it turns out yeah. um, in the Clone Wars. The chances that he comes back in, in uh, Rebels I think very little because the moment he shows up in Rebels, Darth Vader squishes him like a bug right. because he can't have any rivals. So I don't think there, but as we talked about earlier, I think we it's possible if they do Obi-Wan, yeah. we could see him there. Well that run of Son of Dathomir as well too that kind of, I thought when that came out because those were unfinished scripts of Clone Wars, I thought okay well he's going to die in this in this uh, comic in this, in this run and he doesn't. He's still running around out there so they have to mm. I'd like to see how you have to tell us what happened to him mm. Schnepp anything else or in there as far as uh, Darth Maul yeah. no I, I think he, he's going to show up in Obi-Wan that makes yeah. perfect sense okay the next one isn't necessarily a question but I wanted to show you guys this this was done by Ravenclaw 75 he did a little um, Star Wars Jedi Council ah. artwork there I thought that was really cool I like cool. that That's yeah cool. it was really nice I just thought you guys have been sending in so much nice fan art so I just wanted to show Michael's artwork there so thank you Michael for sending that in the next question comes in from the BioNerd12. What is the fear of Luke dying in Episode 7? The mentor dies in first of each trilogy, which is a good point. Mm -hmm. Obi-Wan dies, Qui-Gon dies. Schnapp, what do you think? Any chance that Luke dies in Episode 7? No way. No way. I mean, that would be crazy. I mean, like, I don't want any of them to die, you know? So I don't think Luke is going to kick it in the very first reboot of Star Wars or the re you know the newer sequels. John? Absolutely. You think he's yes. a dinosaur? Uh, no, no, no. I don't think he will. Oh. I don't think he will. But I think it's absolutely possible to the point that I wouldn't put money on it either way. I think it's a 60% he does not die, 40% he does. Wow. Um, so if I had to put if I had to put money on it, I'd say he doesn't. But but I wouldn't put money on it because to me it's it's a little bit too close. I think it's very possible. So I'd bet the bank on solo eating it. Um, but I, <laughs> but Luke I don't see it happening in seven. I think it's really unlikely. There was a question last week that what if he shows up in the, the last five, ten minutes? Would he be upset with that? And I wouldn't because I think that would really set him up as like they're almost looking at a mission to find Luke and then he's a bigger part in eight and then has a showdown with Snoke in nine. That's awesome to me. I hope that that's where it goes. I don't know if it will, but um, I don't think they could kill him off that quick because I don't think it's going to be his story. I think it's going to be the new generation. And I think it's going to be um, Han Solo's story, and they're going to focus more on Solo, and then you're going to get more. 
you have to focus more on Luke in eight, I would assume, so I don't think he's dying. I think the Star Wars, you know, at first it was six, now it's going to be nine, maybe it'll be 12. Right. But it's the Skywalker story. Right. It's so you know, I don't think it's going to focus on Solo. It'll focus on Solo's kids. That's not, yeah. Yeah, like okay. his kids with Leia, who's also a Skywalker. Right. So but Now we don't know, though, by the way. This is something we didn't bring up. You say Solo's kids. If Sana Solo is indeed his wife and they had kids, is there a chance that John Boyega is his kid? Oh, damn. Right? Wow. So, oh, damn. What? So that's something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So next next question. <laughs> ne next question. Uh, at Sean Smiesco, I definitely butchered your name, and I apologize for that. Is it possible that Yoda was referring to someone else when he said there is another? We all just assumed it was Leia. Now, I think when it was created that they were talking about Leia. But if the story group wanted to spin it and say they he was actually talking about somebody else, they could do that, but I don't think they will. John. Yeah. No, I mean, you're right. If you read, once again, we, it's, it's become the new tome around here, How Star Wars Conquered the Universe. Right. If you read that book, he, they, he was talking about Leia. It's very clear. That was the intention. Yeah. He was talking about Leia. That would be one of my fears again of all these comic books. And other, oh, let's play. Hey, we got a little wiggle room there. Let's change everybody's right. perception right. of it. I hope they don't do that. I don't think they'll do that. I think they'll leave it as it is. If they want to introduce something else, they'll find another story hook to do it. Yep. Yeah, I don't. Th it's going to be. It, they, why would they change that? Right. I mean, I see that. Yeah, that if there was a little bit w wiggle room, they would not allow that to be wiggly. They'd be like, Yoda's talking about Leia. Leave it alone. Yep. You know. All right, let's uh, let's take one more here. So yeah, at Rasha Rashan Obar says, "Hey guys, can you explain the role of Inquisitors in the Star Wars universe? I watched Rebels, but I feel like I'm missing something. This is a fair question because a lot of people don't really understand yet, and I don't think they've really introduced <laughs> and explained this guy. That's right? the Inquisitor. Yeah. yeah, and there's going to be more. I think they're bringing Mara Jade in or Mara Jade type character as an Inquisitor in the new season. Now, what these guys, what I've known so far, and even there's kind of a call." Without spoiling, they're mentioned in this in the what we just watched, the siege on Lothar. Yeah, what I think they're trained. They're they're force sensitive, for sure. Um, like if you, there's an episode in season one where Vader tells that Inquisitor to find all the force sensitive children, either take them out or train them. And I think they're not making them Sith lords. They're making them Inquisitors. They've got force abilities. They work for the Empire, and they're, they're essentially soldiers with the Force, but they're not Sith Lords. They haven't been promoted to that, and they can't, or they'll be killed because we rule it too. So that's, that's what I've gotten out of it. I don't know if you guys see it any differently. Well, here's a good example about why that's such a great question, because we don't really know the answer. Right. So that's, that, is, that is a great question. So what are they? Yeah, they're, they're mini Sith. I mean, they're, they're trained to a degree. They're trained to a point. Um, and that's all we got. I mean, obviously, oh, I almost these, are not spoiler these are not these are not these are not said no, right. but they are trained. Uh, right. They have to be by them to up right. to a point. But they are, but but it's only to a point because you're right. If they cross that threshold, oh, now I got to kill you. Right, because you rule it too. Either you, you, now, you know, yeah. do they have midi chlorians? Oops, <laughs> that, that word that word has not come up. I know in anything yep. in, in <laughs> books in comics. It it is a you bad know, word. You know why? Because one of the things that you were talking about, like what made you love Star Wars, for me, it was the Force. Yeah, and the yeah. idea that. Yeah that basically it connected every single person right. on the whole planet right. of earth here not on star wars it, yeah. yeah but it connect no but it connected us as viewers oh, right, right. of star wars with this invisible thing that religions always talk about all these things of the power of believing in yourself all these amazing truths just as a thing, as, yeah. an, as the force. And, and unexplained. It, unexplained, which is perfect because yeah. you cannot explain it. Henceforth, that's why it unites all religions from everywhere. It, it's a thing that is like above and beyond, and it gives you that energy, that belief structure. You know, like you can believe in yourself. And it's great. It also like, strike me down, I'll become more powerful, right. just in memory. Yeah. You don't even know if Luke was just hearing Obi-Wan's voice in his head. It, maybe no one else heard it. He was just hearing, believe in yourself, Luke. It's one of the greatest that's why, to me, Star Wars is such a powerful thing, and that 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 carries through in the the next two movies. Trying to explain the Force, really stupid. Now we're going to break out a Star Trek tricorder. How much Force do you have? I know. <laughs> I, I have mean, this you know, much Force. Midi chlorians. That was one of the biggest mistakes. And like, you know, I know that you know we don't we don't want to make go into midi chlorians or anything. So I know that they're trying to not talk. They're about They're just staying that. away from yeah. it. Yeah, they haven't yeah, brought they it up. Are Better being to fair. not address yeah. it. It's like partial canon or right. so whatever you know well that's it that's the episode another great episode of amc jedi council thank you so much we really had a great time <laughs> with with the council first 
Uh, Obi, Obi John Kenobi, where can the people find you? You guys can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at John Campia. And Dar Schnapp or Boba Schnapp, up to you guys. <laughs> uh, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at John Schnapp and at TDOSLWH. And check out my film, The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened, coming out July 9th at TDOSLWH.com. And for me, Christian Harloff or Darth Harloff, whatever you want to say, go to both Instagram, Twitter, and Periscope at Christian Harloff. And make sure you keep hashtagging AMC Jedi Council. Your questions are amazing. They really bring up a lot of great conversation here. And please, please, please respond to John's um, address the council today and tell us why you love Star Wars in the comment section. Really have your voices be heard. Click that like button. It helps as well. And may the force be with you.